Welcome, welcome. Happy Cinco de Mayo. Today is May 5th, and we're supposed to be out partying, you know, drinking whatever or not. But we're here because <laughs> we love you. Why? Because we love you. I don't remember who used to do that. Why? Because we love you. Anyway, welcome, welcome. We're going to talk about your questions, our answers. This is, we do this once a year just to kind of scoop things up a little bit. And this time I decided to try to answer your questions with garments. You know, I just thought that would be kind of a little fun rather than just talking. You could actually see the changing garments. So that's what we're going to do. I feel wildly disorganized tonight because um, generally if the webcast is on Tuesday, I'm wrapping it up sewing like by last week, Wednesday or Thursday. But all these questions came in Sunday, Monday, which... You know, I can't, I can't, I have this, you know, I can't do that. So next year, we'll remind you that when we have the questions and answers, send the information out to us a couple weeks in advance and we can incorporate it better. I'm apologizing in advance. I'm sure there's questions. I haven't even gotten to emails today. Haven't even seen them. There's just too many other things that have been going on today in the regular course of the day. So if you missed it, if, if I missed your question that you sent yesterday, today, you know, don't get all fluff, flustered. It's simply that um, I just didn't get to it. But I'll still answer it, you know, just in a regular email. It just won't be included tonight, okay? Okay, so we got all kinds of pictures. Probably too many, <laughs> probably too many pictures. But we got a lot of pictures, and I think pictures are good because they're visual and you can see what's going on. So let's just start. And because I don't know what's coming up, in the order it's coming up. Okay, this is the jean jacket, pattern number 900. And the question was asked was, I have extra fabric at the side. So should I go down in size? So you guys, please, please, when you are making a garment that has a sleeve on it, such as the jean jacket, you cannot make a shell leave the sleeve off and wonder if it's okay. It's, you know, so let me just kind of explain that when your garment has sleeves, a non-knit garment, I'm not talking a t-shirt, I'm talking a blouse, a jacket, when you are making it, because it has sleeves, the size is altered because they're sleeves. If I were to make a vest like I have on tonight, I can go down in size because I don't need ease. Ease is that magic word that I have to have more space, more circumference, because I need mobility. Mobility equals ease. And so she's way too premature to even be thinking, does you know, she have too much? That's why when you are trying to choose size, you should be choosing from garments you wear. Because if you choose from a garment you wear and it has sleeves and then you make it up like this in a muslin and you put it on without the sleeves, 100% out of 100, you're going to say, it's too big. I've heard, it, I've heard it just over and over and over. You just because we don't understand what sleeves do to a garment, okay? So to me, this looks like it's going to be fine. No worries. Keep going on. If you look at this, you notice there's no gapping. The other thing to be aware of just when you're making up muslins, just good information to have, is you remember there's L, C, and D. So why do I make a muslin? And I know a lot of you are saying right now, I don't. <laughs> Let me rephrase that question. Why should I make a muslin? A muslin is for things that I cannot change after the cloth is cut. So for instance, in this case, this is circumference. I could always change that and make it less if it turned out to be too much. But if the length is wrong, I can't make a muslin longer. If the depth is wrong, I can't just all of a sudden whack a dart out of it. So this looks really good to me. I don't see any length issues. I don't see any depth issues. She might have a circumference issue. That's going to be personality, but she can always change that down the road. Okay. All right. I hope that makes sense. When do we receive the email with a password and access for the online class beginning tomorrow? Tonight. You'll get it tonight. You'll get it, um, I don't know exactly what time. It's already scheduled to go out. Um, but remember, the class starts tomorrow, and all we want to do is give you the password. Everything's up and ready to go. 
We're just going to send you a password and directions, not directions, instructions. That's a better word. Instructions on how to get, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so that'll come. Again, I'm not remember the time that they set it to go out tonight, but it'll go out tonight. You'll still get it tonight. We don't want you getting into the class tonight. The class is tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> All right. I know it, you're eager. I, I, you know, I know. I always get, it says on the directions of the class, you will on Tuesday. It doesn't say Tuesday at 9 a.m. It just says Tuesday. And I, what I should say is I, on Tuesday late evening. That's what I should be more specific on that. Okay. So then let's go ahead and look at some more pictures. Oh, this one. Okay. This really prompted me to, I love this look. I just think it's so pretty. You can see it's Ellie Tahari. Um, this is actually a top and a skirt, but it prompted me and gave me an idea to talk about how can I take my tops and make them into dresses? Because one of the questions I got was, could you be specific as to how to take and lengthen a top to make sure it will fit my hips? So we're going to be specific. We are going to show picture number 619, Benjamin. Can you get to that? please. 619. So I, now the one I made for that answer is this one right here. This is pattern number 619. And what I did is it's the halter. We all made it. We love it. It's easy. So let's do it out of this fun fabric. This is pattern. The fabric is pattern. I'm sorry, 619. The pattern is 30. The fabric. Gosh, I'm not sure why I can't say that tonight. But the fabric is 3274. This is a border print. It's an ITY border print. And I love black. I don't love um, taupe. Actually, it, I love taupe. It doesn't love me. So this was a great opportunity for me to include a different color in my wardrobe that I really don't have. But I, I used all the black up by the neck. And then obviously I accented it with the black. So uh, the picture 619 is it? Oh, labeled one. Oh, sorry labeled number one. There we go. Okay, so that's not the one I want. How about number two? Yep, there we go. Okay, guys, again, like this is totally my bad because <laughs> there's so many pictures, they're not in order. And so it's going to just be patient with us a little bit tonight. There was a lot of things I wanted you to see. I just don't have them in the exact order. Um, my measured tops, 38 bust for Patty's Princess. The waist come in. Okay, wait. My measured, my measured, my top, I guess, measures 38 for Patty's Princess. And the hip. I don't even understand this question. <laughs> you guys are typing way too fast. You're going to have time for your questions. Type slower so that we can understand the question. And then you don't have to do it twice. Okay. So, according to the pattern, three or four inches large, do I grade the waist and hips down or choose a smaller? So, in silhouette patterns, you always choose by the bust. Always choose by the bust. It's the simplest way to do. Okay? Always go for the bust. Okay, back to where we were. Okay, so we are at picture number... This picture, it's up. Forget the number that it is. Um, and what I wanted to show you is I took a skirt pattern and I placed it onto, and I cut purposely didn't line it up. Just know that's the front and the back. You would line it up perfectly to the fronts because both the fronts are straight of grain or straight. I don't know if they're straight of grain, but straight. And But you don't want to put the skirt at the bottom because that would be too low. You want that skirt to be at the waist of the top. So you'll have to figure out where your waist is, either make it up, do a muslin somehow, and then you just place the waist of the skirt at the waist of the top, and you cut it all as one, okay? Very easy to do, but if it curves out more, if the waistline is larger on the skirt than it is on the top, or vice versa, you always take, you always go out to the largest because once you make it up, you can bring it in smaller, you can't take it out larger. So when you're blending two pieces together, you put it together and you go to the widest and then blend it in at the side. And that's it. Okay, very easy to do. And hopefully that makes it clear. I did want to show you this little top 
Okay, wait a minute. Let's go back because I'm forgetting what I'm supposed to be doing. This is the halter, 619. You guys asked me to show you the pattern. There you go, 619. And then over that, what I did is 196. We have this beautiful, I don't have 196. Sorry, it's the cardigan. We have this beautiful lightweight fabric. It's 3273. It is light. It is like see-through. I mean, it is a beautiful, and I believe it's a cotton knit. It just doesn't feel like cotton in the world. It feels like this beautiful, great silk. It's just lovely. 3273, you'll need two yards. Okay, so that's that outfit. We can put that outfit away. Okay. Then let's see what's next. What time does the class start? What class? The online class? The online class, there's no starting time. We, we've recorded all the all the videos and then we're putting them up but you can watch it every day as long as you want you know it's the pants class if you haven't signed up it's not you can't sign up just FYI okay okay when is the only time you can scoop the crotch seam in the back of a pair of pants when's the only time never <laughs> that question concludes that there is a time you can scoop no scooping, ladies. You guys are scoopaholics. No scooping. And let me just say for the record, there is a time where there's an exception, but I'm not telling you because you guys scoop first and you ask questions later. So I'm not telling you you can scoop because it's like, I'm not gonna do it. No scooping. Scooping is not the answer. If I wanna make the jean jacket sleeveless, where do I need to do to the armholes? Nothing. How do I finish them? Off if I don't have a serger. That would be your answer. That, I mean, I can't answer that. I've got two sergers. You guys can answer that. Sillies, come on. You could do binding. You could do, I mean, there's probably 5,000 ways to finish edges without a serger. Okay, go shopping, be observant, look at what's out there and duplicate. That's what I do. And your stores are open. Did y'all know that? Your stores are open. Or actually, probably not everywhere. Not if you're in New York. I talked to them today. It's not good. Okay, so let's go on to the next one. I'm going to address all the questions that were sent to me ahead of time because that's what we ask you to do. If we have time, we'll go back to the questions that are coming in. But we wanted to really um, just not shoot off the cuff tonight, and so I asked you a couple weeks ago to submit questions, and many of you did that. Okay, so this was a ruffle that was put down the front of the... Um, halter and I thought this was adorable so literally if you notice on this ruffle both sides are the right side of the fabric so that it's been double and anytime you make a ruffle you literally take a, a rectangle so you measure from the top of that halter to the bottom and then you cut the outside into pivot points think of the baggage where the baggage comes out at the baggage claim how it curves around the corner and it gets bigger you're going to make it curve. You want the end. So where, when you hold it straight, it comes down and ruffles, and that can just be attached to the front. Um, someone sent that to me, and I thought that was cute, and we would show that on. Okay? All right, so this is the next one. Somebody asked me if I took pattern 615, which is this one right here, how would I make it into a ruffle dress? So just FYI, ruffle dress, dresses are all over the place. Jeez Louise, they're all over the place. So we're going to show you, let's look at the next picture because I think it's a ruffle dress also. Yep, there you go. They're cute. I mean, they're just cute. Ours is this one right here. I'm going to put this one out of the way and show you this one. Um, this is fabric number 3076. So what I did is I put the ruffle on a bias and then the rest of the top on a, you know, the regular. I left a little slit on the side because I just thought that was cute. I'm seeing a lot of tops right now with slits like this on the side, so I just thought that was adorable. You can wear um, both shoulders up, you can wear one shoulder down, you can wear both shoulders down. Lots of variety as to how you can wear it and how you want to wear it. Again, I just think it's an adorable look, it's really popular. So I'm glad this question was asked because this is, this is a really strong trend right now. And it's not an easy question to ask, to answer via email. So I appreciate whoever asked it. All right, so let's look at picture, pick number one. Sorry. <laughs> oh, go back to that picture. That was good. 
Look at this, you guys. This is like the fabric. It's adorable. And it's top and bottom. So I wouldn't be afraid to go top and bottom with this. I love that photo. I just wanted you to see that. I just thought it was a great look. And it's real close. Not exact, but it's real close to our fabric. And that, again, that fabric is 3076. Okay, so here it is. Um, I left out the sleeve completely. And if you look at the little piece at the bottom, I made no changes to uh, one and two, which is the front and back. But if you look at the piece laying down there on the side, that's all the pattern has is like a little neck ribbing. No, it's not a ribbing, it's a band. It basically sews on together and you thread elastic through it. It's kind of like a casing. So, but it's, so, it's only like an inch wide. You finish off both edges and you put it on top and it's only like an inch wide. So you want obviously much more than that. So I made mine 12 inches wide and this is all just styling. And you can make it anything you want. So this is, I'm sorry, it's 13. So here's the trick though. You cannot just keep that band exactly like it is because if you take the band and just make it wider to 13 or whatever the number is, then once it gets wider, you can't move your arms. So it's got to have more fullness in through here than what that top pattern has. So it's very easy to do. Remember, you're going to leave off the sleeves. There's no sleeve under here at all. You don't need a sleeve. It's all finished. But you're going to take the tape measure and you're going to wrap it around your body, arms included, and don't measure it, um, you know, like straight down, move and let this expand out. And basically what I got it to was I got it to about 60 was what I felt for me was comfortable. Everybody will be different. So then I just went to the size that had this band being 60 wide, or you can just make the band 60 wide and 13, you know, deep. So if you pull this way out, it's 60 wide and 13 deep. And then it, you don't have to change the top underneath because it's going to sew on, there's no sleeve. So it's not a one-to-one -one measurement anyway. And you just sew it on, put the elastic through, and you're good to go. Easy enough? Okay, let's answer a couple questions. Can you make a neck wider instead of elastic on 619? Can you make a wider neck? Yeah, I think that's what probably we just answered. This is 619. Oh, 619. Wait a minute, I'm sorry. This is 619. Can you make the neck wider? I imagine just draw up the sides. You know, just draw these sides up to here. Can you make the neck wider and how, yeah, just, just physically draw it. It's all styling. All of that neckline is styling. Okay. Peggy, what pattern did you use for the black vest? We're going to talk to this later on. This is a combination. Somebody asked me how you take the collar of 600 and put it on the top of 575 because they didn't like the collar that's on 575. So I did it. And then I just made this little duster out of it. We'll get to that here in a second. I hear you, I've heard you mention a woven shell pattern with a zipper under the arm down the side to get into it. What pattern number is that? This is why you have to ask me ahead of time because I can't remember. I don't know. I mean, I don't think, I don't think we have a pattern that has a zipper in it. 617 is a pattern that we have that has a zipper down the side to get into it. The tank top, which is 514, um, is fitted. And if you fit it additionally, then you can't get it off. So depending on if you make it out of knit or woven, and if you fit it to the extent that you can't get the waist over the bust, the point of the zipper is to open up the waist to get it over your bust. So you might look at 514, okay? Okay, are we okay there? Okay, everybody good? Okay, so let's go on. This was another one I wanted you to see just because it's fabric. This fabric is just popular enough. It's black and white. I've just seen it all over the place. And it's just cute. It's just really cute. Okay. All right, so I got sent this picture by a customer. And she said, "Would you sh what base pattern would I use? Um, and so I did it. 
I did it for you. I told her I wouldn't, but then I decided I could do this. My only fear is that I'm going to lose you all because it's not, you know, one, it's not, I don't know. It's not straightforward. Is that fair? It's, I mean, it's easy. It's good, but I don't want to lose you. <laughs> but at the same time, I also realize there's ladies who are more sophisticated and they like to have more stuff. Uh, they're more advanced. I don't mean sophisticated, you guys. They're just more advanced. They love to do pattern work. And so I decided to throw it in and then you guys could make the call. Okay. So keep in mind that whenever you're using difference of fabrics, that makes a difference. I really like mine. Uh, mine is 3286 is the fabric. It's 100% silk. I use two yards. The pattern is 1825. So the way I would answer that question, if I were in an email, what base would I start with? I would just answer that question with 1825. I also know though that that would leave you all probably dazed and confused because you don't know where to go with 1825 or some of you would and some of you wouldn't. So we're going to go through and show you the steps to this 1825. And again, please don't, um, you know, feel like you have to follow along. Just sit back and listen and enjoy because it's, it, you know, I wouldn't call it pattern making 101. It's not hard, but there it is. And I put the steps out just so that you feel like you wouldn't get totally confused. A lot of this is all about the collar. Can we put that picture up? Can we do both of those at the same time? Maybe on the other side or someplace. So let's first take a look and kind of diagnose the photo. Um, I want you to look at the photo and see that it's asymmetric. So that means, you know, it's, it overlaps. It doesn't go down center front. And that's why I chose 1825. 1825 was already done that way. So that means I didn't have to change the body. All I had to change was the collar. And to me, that's a piece of cake. So that's why I chose 1825 as the base. 1825 is in the jacket family but I could always sub out the sleeve, but it doesn't have a shoulder pad in the jacket family. It's a very casual jacket, so I knew that first. I also am fully aware, you guys, that you don't know these patterns like I do, so it's really much easier for me to answer that question than it would be for you to try to find them, which is why a lot of times I say, ask me, don't be afraid to ask. Um, but I also know that sometimes when I answer that, you don't get my perspective on it. So that's why I just did this one. I thought it would be fun to do it so that you could walk through the steps with me and we're going to get there. Okay, so if you go to the base pattern, 1825, it is double breasted at the top, but then it opens up to be single breasted. It actually kind of has a V to it. So if you notice in piece number one, what I did is I stopped that and I took the asymmetric straight down all the way to the hem. That's important. Okay. I decided at the bottom of that sleeve, you can see where the stripe changed directions, although I liked that. For me, I didn't feel like I would ever really, you know, I didn't really feel like I wanted the attention there. So I did no changes to the sleeve. The jacket has a two piece sleeve and I went ahead and left it as it is. And all I did was roll up the sleeve. I just really liked that. Okay, then the next thing would be to um, go to that photo and again recognize that where it's cut and where the stripes change directions if you measure the little picture it's about a one-to-one -one. I decided I didn't like to curve the bottom because to me it was striped and I didn't like the idea that the bottom was curved but that's me you guys know how to curve a bottom and you, if you want to you know you can so figure the top of the blast and the bottom of the blast are about a one-to-one -one. And so you can see that it's only in the, I, I did not see the back again. You guys sent this to me and I'm sorry, I never, I hate to, I should pay more attention. I don't know who sent it to me, but anyway, um, so there was a line cut on piece number one, piece number two, the back, I completely left solid. So you can see, we're not really going to be talking about the back much because I left it solid and I left it vertical to match the sleeves, which is typically what's done in the blouse. Okay. Okay, so um, then we're going to change the collar. And then really that's it. We're going to add a pocket. 
we're going to add a front facing, but it's really not a facing. It's just a piece that goes on top because it's already asymmetric. Um, and you're going to add those ties. But those are all just straight pieces of fabric, things that are really easy to do. The collar is really where a little bit of um, work comes in. The collar is wider. If you notice, I'm going to talk about the, the right front and the left front. The right front is wider than the left front. So I widened the collar, and you can see I did that by two inches. But if you'll notice, I did it on one end, but not on the other. So the other, the, the left end, I left it like it is. It's the right end, which is on top, that I, I widened by two inches. And then you can go through and see how I changed the ends. This is basically what the collar came out to looking like. And then you have to cut this off because the stripe on that section, as you can see, is going a different direction than the collar and the stripe the rest of the way. Okay, I got these beautiful buttons on. I hadn't got them up on the website yet. But these beautiful silver, I love these buttons, just absolutely love them. And it, I just love that. I mean, I think it's adorable. I think it's adorable. I don't think if I didn't, if, wouldn't have liked the black, I wouldn't have done it. But I just really like the blouse and it was fun. Stripes again are so popular right now that it's just a really fun play on stripes. So you can see the steps there. Um, the collar itself, you know, you'll have to play with it. But again, don't, mine is not exact. If you really scrutinize it, it doesn't need to be exact. I think it just accomplishes the look and the look is cute. Easy enough? Okay. Does Monica's tank have a zipper on the side? I do not remember. So what that means is you'll have to go to the website, go to 517. Uh, it's actually, it's on a fit to stitch. Monica's tank is on fit to stitch. So you'll go to Monica's tank 517 and click on the front, it'll go to the back and it'll have notions. And if it has a visible zipper, then it does. If it doesn't have an invisible zipper, then it doesn't, okay? I'm cutting the bust size 38 for Patty's Princess. The waist and hips are three to four inches too large. Do I grade the waist? I think we already answered this. We'll do it again. Do I grade the waist and hips down or choose smaller bust and grade the bust up? Okay, let me say this again. You always choose the pattern by the bust. So it sounds like from this question, wait, leave that. Oh, can you go back to that? Sorry. It sounds like this question, that the bust is smaller than the hips. It sounds like the bust is smaller than the hips, right? I'm not understand. Here, no, 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 I wanna figure this out. Okay, the waist and hips are three to four inches too large. They're too large when you choose for the bust. You always choose for the bust. In a silhouette pattern, you always, always, always choose for the bust. The whole reason you have princess seams is if you need to go from one bust size larger, you just cross lines and go larger. If you need to go that bust smaller, whichever one, I'm not sure which one you're doing, you go smaller. You always go by the bust, always. You guys hear that? That's always, that means all the time, every time. And then you can either grade down or grade up for whether your hips are larger or smaller. And it says that right on the back of the directions so that you can choose the pattern size you need to choose correctly. Remember, it's a knit, so negative ease comes into effect. Okay, let's move along. It was asked to me, I wanted you to see this, um, how do I raise the neck on 215? 215 is Nikki's favorite top. This is what it looks like. So I started looking for kind of current trends on what, you know, ruching is still really popular right now um, and what's really going on with Nikki's top. And it's ruching and flor floral flowers are being mixed together. So I want to go to the next photo here and show you that you're gonna see some flower tops. There you go. 
that is Ted Baker. And if you've not heard of Ted Baker, you can search for Ted Baker. It's Ted Baker London. Ted Baker does a lot of floral knits. When I bought this knit, this is actually 3266. I immediately thought of Ted Baker. I mean, it's so Ted Baker-ish looking that that's kind of immediately what came to mind because he does a lot of floral, beautiful knits. Okay, and the Ted Baker, just if you don't know, it's pretty, pretty, pretty expensive, for, especially for t-shirts. Okay, so, um, you know, I'm gonna stop here for a minute. Let's go back to that photo. Let's go back to the photo of the uh, picture before. And one back. We're gonna go back to the blouse, the 1825 that goes with that. It's the drawing it would be on the second grouping that I gave you. Uh, yeah, yep, 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 one of those. One of those you just said, no. And you said one of the, yep, the drawing, there you go. I think it's 1825. Did I number it 1825 or did I change the numbers? Okay, let's go four. Nope, three. There we go. Okay. So anytime there's a line on there, I'm just trying to give you how the collar was changed. So you can see that I made it wider and that's that red line. And then I changed the angle of the end. That's the green line. And then the blue line is when I cut it off so that I could put the stripes going in one direction one way and another direction the other way. The collar has the stripes are changing directions and they're doing that with a seam. All right. So I don't think tonight you should necessarily try to grasp that pattern. Uh, it's there. It's all there. I even That's why I kind of numbered it for you. When you go to do it, just go back, freeze it and go through that section. Okay. And then you'll, you'll get it. It's not difficult. It's just time consuming if that's fair and you got to want to do it. I did. Okay, so that's what the that's what the different color lines are. It's just showing you that they're different steps. Would you consider lining the pocket on a striped shirt? Would I consider it? It's your call. It's whatever you feel like you want to do. Um, always bust. Do you take the high bust in measurement into consideration? Never, never, please, please. If you're fixated on a high bust measurement, don't use silhouette patterns. I don't know what else to tell you. High bust doesn't tell you anything. You guys, you know, don't get me started. <laughs> I'm like the little engine. Man, once you get me started, I'm going <laughs> to chug and chug and chug and never quit. No, high bust measurement. I mean, you know, this is something that no one does except the home sewing industry. And unfortunately, because that's what you've been told and that's what you've been taught, you think that's actually what works. It does not. And clearly, you all know it doesn't work. You have massive fitting issues. That's because you're taking high bust measurements, but we won't go there. We'll stay away. Okay, so now let's go back, back to Ted Baker. And I want to show you this 215. Someone wanted to know, how do you raise a neckline? So for me, I was going to wear this because you've seen this blouse on me. Um, and so if I raise the neckline, you could clearly see that it's, it's higher. But it's really cute and it's really nice. Let's go to four. Yep, there we go. Before we do that though, let's go back to those photos, the florals. And let me just go through those florals here for a minute. I just kind of wanted to show you the trends that floral prints have today. They're very strong. Um, not really big, 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 big flowers, just smaller flowers. And they're really pretty and they're really nice. So that's why I decided to do this top out of this print even though I had nothing to do with raising the neckline, I wanted to raise the neckline, show you how to do it, but doing a print and do it in a way that I thought was fresh and current. Okay. Okay. So let's go back to the picture of that, which is four. So this is really easy to do. Now, if you've never made this top, you know, it's going to feel very confusing to you because you don't understand the pieces and how they go together. But the top only has five pieces. This is the five pieces. And three of them you don't change to raise the neckline. So piece number two is actually the neckline. It's the piece that comes down here. 
And what I did, if you notice, is I widened it. Now I did a half an inch and I think a half inch is probably good for anybody who feels like they need to raise the neckline. Don't just raise the neckline. Um, make a muslin, figure out, yeah, I want the neckline raised and then do these changes or I guess it's up to you. I just, I'm very opposed to making changes unless you feel like you need a change. So it is your pattern and your time. You can do whatever you want, I guess. So you see I drew piece number two, folds in half, wrong sides together, vertically. So when you're widening it and you do that half inch, you have to do the half inch on both sides. And then because it creates this right here and it sews to the back and that back neck, which is piece number four, you have to extend the back shoulder seam up a half an inch also, which is what I did, and then connect it to the back here. Okay, so you just all you do is put a half inch on each piece. I wouldn't do it more than a half inch, you know. Just go slow because small amounts mean big changes. Remember, you're extending it in this way a half an inch, and you don't have that much out until you'll hit your neck. So just be aware of that. Okay. Okay. Again, very easy to do. Um, Two fifteen. Nikki's top. Great top and you can just raise that neckline doing that. Can we see the inside of the front collar overlap of the striped shirt? Um, okay, so this is just a piece that's added on. It's not on the inside. If you look at the inside, you'll see that the stripes are going the same way. All I did was took a two inch wide facing literally two inches wide and just top stitched it right on top of the already existing pattern piece. So it's really probably wrong of me to call it a facing. It's really not a facing. It's just a, I don't know, just a piece that's stitched on top that shows the other direction. So if you take it to the inside, you just see that it's exactly like this. All right, so all I did was take a, the stripe going the opposite direction, took a two inch wide piece and, and stitched it right on top. Okay, what's high bust? If you don't know what it is, good job. Don't, you, please don't ever care what high bust is. No high bust. Nope, nope, all we do is we measure our garments. Remember, we shouldn't be measuring ourselves. The whole reason we have tape measures is to remember to measure our garments, not our bodies. Our bodies, anytime we measure our body, you have to have an interpretation to get to what you want your clothing to be. And that is way more difficult than just measuring our clothing. Our clothing makes it simple and easy. We know what we like. We have a whole closet full of stuff we like and we can just measure our clothing. Okay, let's go on to the next picture, please. This top I really wanted to show you this. Nobody asked a question about this. I wanted to show you this top because I thought it was cute and because we've talked a little bit lately about fitting lines and decorative lines and this is all decorative lines. That's all it is. There's no fit lines in there. It's all just decorative and I thought it was cute. The only thing I didn't like about it is if you notice your eye goes to the middle of her body because she's got the lightest color in the middle. And of course, as we make it, we wouldn't do that. We would put the white on the top and then the stripe and then the solid would be the way to go. But again, just things to think about when we go in to make them. Okay, next. I wanted to show you this because someone had sent this to me and I thought it was cute. It had a little uh, drawstring through the jean jacket. We've done a lot of jean jackets and we like them. And so this one with a little drawstring, I thought was a cute look. And again, I don't remember who sent it, so thank you for sending it, and we'll move on. Okay, so here we get into what I have on, which I love this tunic. Now this is knee length, or even longer. I did not want mine that long. Mine is, um, if, my, if my shoulder to knee is, is 40, I did this like 36. So that is much longer than mine. If you notice though, the look is it's a, it's just such a cute look and it's got that Jags pants, that wider leg underneath. So I just really thought that was cute together. And there, the next picture is the same one, but it shows the front. Now this is a little, um, 
that's the back there I wanted you to see the back it's kind of got a little v-neck it reminded me of a Sonia's blast so when the question came in I don't like Sonia's the collar on Sonia's blouse, which by the way, I love the collar. <laughs> this is Sonia's blouse. Um, how do I put the collar of 600 onto 575? So we're taking the collar of 600 and we're putting it on 575. And because I really liked um, the collar, I just wanted to do it to show it to you and I decided to do it like in a little tunic. So the top I have on, I know it's black and it's gonna be hard for you to see. Uh, the fabric that I used is number 3280 it's a beautiful beautiful black cotton as I was sewing on it I mean it is just absolutely stunning fabric um, 3280 is the fabric I you, you're gonna need a good two yards because I made mine 10 inches longer than the pattern and as it made it 10 inches longer you had to that had to happen so I'm gonna show you picture number five or no it was the one that came in later I guess it was the drawing would be a drawing of the two collars. Yeah, that last one. The top collar there is 575. And then what I did is I superimposed 600 onto it. I did a lousy job of drawing, but I wanted you to see that collar number 575, the neck edge, is longer than 600. But other than that, it's simply a narrower collar is all it is. It's what's called a mandarin but it's a mandarin that has an extreme uh, jaunt or bend to it at the, at the shoulder seam so that it lays nice and flat in the front. That's the, that's the mandarin collar for 575. So if you put 600 on top of it, you have to have the length of 575, but the style of 600. So that's what that photo shows. 600 is the width of, I mean, I'm sorry, the red is the width of 600 and the black is the length of 575, okay? And that's it, it's pretty easy to do. And so I have a collar on mine that's like 600. And you sew it the same way, I did this, everything the same thing, and I did it the vest and I did it the, you know, duster type thing, because I just really, really liked it. I really like it. Okay, sorry, this is off topic, but do you have animals, dog or cat? I do not. Nope. My muslin for the two-piece sleeve pattern for 617 marks is different from the pattern for 900 carols. Is Mark's sleeve more consistent with other two-piece blouse patterns? Well, I would have to... I don't know why 617 would be different than 900. Maybe if you could email me privately, we could have that discussion. Marks does not have a cuff on the bottom and Carol's does. So there are some changes um, in adding the fullness for the vent and the pleat. You know, there's some style changes in there, but as far as the sleeve itself and the armhole and the circumference, they're the same. Okay, so I'm not sure exactly what you're asking for. But whenever I get a question like this, again, it's hard for me to just, because I, I don't, if, if that question was emailed to me, I'd go get 617, I'd go get 900, and I would physically do the comparison and shoot you back the differences. Or if you were asking me, if you'll tell me what the differences are, what you're observing, then that would be helpful as well, okay? Because sometimes we're talking, we're saying the same thing. We're just saying it a little different way. Okay, then somebody asked me, what is a defuz defuzzer? <laughs> so I wanted to ask, answer what a defuzzer is. And I want to talk for a minute about pilling. Pilling. What is pilling? So pilling is um, anytime you have short fibers, and that would be mainly in wool, mainly in cottons and linens. Those are all sh shorter fibers, as if we compare them to like polyesters. Because polyester is man-made, they can make those fibers as long as they want. And silk. Silk is a... A worm and those fibers are very very long so silk and poly have a tendency not to pill and fabrics that pill have just shorter fibers because what happens is when there's agitation on those fibers the fibers poke their little the ends poke their little heads up and that's what is called pilling pilling has nothing to do with quality pilling is not about 
cheap fabrics pill more than expensive fabrics. Not true at all. And so just to kind of demo a little bit, I, I have this cashmere sweater and this cashmere sweater was not cheap, uh, but it's wool. And because remember when you take a piece of wool, it can, you know, it can't, they don't let the sheep hair get down to their ankles, you know, like they don't get really long strands. They're short little strands. And so they'll pill. And if you can see this, do you think we could get close on this? We're going to show you where the pill is where the pilling is, and then we'll just show this little fuzzer. So it's taken me a long time to find these things, but they are, uh, there's a company called Conair that makes these little shavers. They're called fabric shavers. And I wanted to find a competitor that was the same thing. So I actually found them and right before they put that name Conair on them, I found them. Like I said, it took me a long time. So they're just electric, or I'm sorry, battery. You put the batteries in. And you literally just make sure it's a smooth surface. And it's just amazing what it does. So like, I've had ladies ask me between their legs. They get pilling because of that rubbing. Just make sure you have a little depiller. And then you want to make sure the, fa the fabric is flat so that it doesn't catch. Your little blades in there don't catch it. It's made not to, so it's not like you really have to worry. But that's a big difference between before and after. And then if you notice, where do all the little pills go? So you have this little removable deal. I've often thought, wouldn't it be pretty to make a little collage out of all this little fuzz? Because it's really pretty and it's really soft. But anyway, you just empty it out of there. I'm completely making a mess to where you have a garbage to put it in. And that's a depiller. I've had one for forever. And I've gotten so many questions on pilling and, you know, do they just throw it away? No, my goodness, that's... It, again, it has nothing to do with quality of your fabric. It just simply means that that fiber has gotten agitation. Whenever you wash, you should turn your garments uh, inside out. That will help the agitation. Agitation is what causes it. That's why front loaders are much better for your clothing than top loaders. Top loaders clean with agitation and front loaders do not. So just an FYI about what it is and you know, look at how you're cleaning things. Do you turn your clothes inside out or do you just throw them in, et cetera, et cetera, okay? But that's amazing before and after to me. It really makes a difference. It makes the garment look brand new again. Doesn't hurt the garment at all. It's not like you're gonna eat all the fibers away. It's no problem. Okay, how are we doing on time? I can't see, sorry. Okay, so we've got a little bit of time left. Let's answer some questions. Can we do that? And I'll do my best. If the question is something that's just not, you know, I'll do my best. How's that? If I can't, if I see that it just can't be answered, we'll say mm, email. But I do appreciate those people who have sent things in. Um, oh, you know what? There was another drawing I did. I take that back. I did get one that came in, I think, Sunday. Let's, let's do that. Um, yep, this is it. Thank you, Benjamin. He's right on it. He's five steps ahead of me. This is 116. And I've got, there's a photo that I, did I give you that photo? I might not have. It might still be on my desktop. No, I didn't. Okay. So there's a photo she sent me, and I'm sorry, I left it on my desktop. But when she makes 116, 116, and I don't have it here, is Chanel's top. And it is, um, there's pleats in the shoulder, and then there's gathers, and it goes around the neck, and it wraps. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful top. When she puts it on, because her bust is larger than a D, I think, anyway, she said that, she, and, and the picture showed where the gaps are, and the gaps are, of course, are right in the armhole. So what that means, what, what, I'm, what the fix is, is you really have to understand how to pivot a dart. It's not hard, but the first thing you're going to do is you're going to pin in a bust dart. In the garment you have on, she's got it on in the picture, you're going to pin in the bust dart, okay? So in any garment, pin in a bust dart. Once you realize what is the bust dart doing when we really stop and think about it, the bust dart is taking away length at the side of the garment, but leaving it longer in the middle. The bust dart is not changing circumference. It's not BC and D cup does not change circumference in any way. Depth is depth, depth is not circumference. They're different, they're in different boxes. So she's got a depth issue even though she's in the right circumference. 
So in this case, she's going to take a dart and she's going to make it larger. The dart's already, you know, moved up to the top of the garment, but when she puts it on, the dart that was there is not large enough for her. So she's going to make another one. Until, and, and, and the reason you're doing this is so you'll know how much more of a dart you need. So that's what that picture shows. What the, that's what the black lines are, is the new dart in the garment. Notice it's coming from the side seam. Don't make a dart from the armhole. The, the problem is in the armhole simply because that's the weakest link. So make the dart coming from the side seam, and then you're going to pivot it. And where you pivot it to doesn't make any difference. I pivoted up to the shoulder. You could put it in that shoulder. There's a pleat at the shoulder. If you want to, you could put it in there, or you could put it into the pleats that are in the shawl collar. You can put it in there. But you're, in order to, to move that dart, you're going to close up one and open up another section. Now, let me just say that if in this case, and I'm only talking directly, I, again, I'm sorry, I can't remember who sent it. I apologize. But if you're talking about move it into the shoulder, there's already a pleat there, I would make two pleats, not one big one, because as the pleat gets too big, it won't hang straight. It'll start to get so off grain that it doesn't, even if it's a knit, it'll just start to get so off that it won't lay as nicely. So I would strongly recommend, if you're going to move it to the shoulder, make two little pleats there rather than trying to get it all into one. And it's very simple to do. Now, when you made that dart, you made the side seam shorter, just add it to the bottom to make it match the back. You have changed the angle of the side seam, so you don't have to worry about um, adding it to the bottom. And we'll put the problem right back where it was. Where you put the dart and where you, uh, you know, change it makes all the difference. Okay, that'll solve the problem. And that's the same with a cowl. When you're doing it with a cowl, that was her other question, you can put the, again, make the dart in the bust, and by that way, you know how much needs to be fixed. That gives you an idea how much you need to be fixed. And then just pivot it right into the neckline, okay, on the cowl. Okay, when you crease, okay. How do I pick my cup size? How do you pick your bra cup size? You do it the same. However you do one, you do the other. Would you recommend turning all garments inside out when you wash in a front loader? Absolutely, absolutely. I always, I've done that for a million years. Absolutely. Yes. Hi, Peggy. Hi. I made up Leanne's top. The body fits well, but the neck or collar. The body fits well, but the neck or collar. Can I just take a few darts along the neck piece and then smooth the outside? Sounds like you can. Leanne's top. Leanne's top wraps around the neck. It's a knit. It should stretch. I'm just thinking this through. Why can't you stretch it rather than taking darts? Just throwing that back at you. Could you explain how to put a hood on Abby's top? Um, so I don't think you really want to know how to put on a hood because you just literally put it on. I think you mean how do you finish the edges maybe with Abby's top? Abby's top has a um, a band around the neck edge, I would put that hood right in between the band and the top. Put it right in that seam. And then the neck edge of the hood will be finished and it's inside the band. Very simple to do. One, when you order several patterns at once, do you pay shipping for each or is it adjusted for the total shipping order? No, it's adjusted for the total shipping order. Every item that you put in your basket has a certain weight um, assigned to it. And so once these weights get over a certain amount, then it trips you up to the next thing. So like the post office uses 16 ounces as a very sharp difference. If it's 15.9 versus 16, it's amazing how it, it doubles in price. So anything under you know, 16 ounces is a world of difference from something over 16 ounces. When you increase the size of the dart, do you take it in equally on each dart line or just the bottom line? No, equally, equally. There's no, there's no bottom. You're creating the dart. So you just take it up until it, it solves the problem, which it's gapping at the armhole. That's the problem. And it's gapping at the armhole because there's too much length at the side of the garment. There's too much length. There's not enough dart taking it away. There's no way a garment can, can be long enough for the front 
and B, long enough for the side because the side is shorter than the front. You got a shoulder seam, you got a bust, you know, you got all that. What's the correction for a diagonal wrinkle in the back below the shoulder blade? Angling to the hip side, it would be the shoulder angle. Pick up the shoulder angle. What is the correction for a diagonal wrinkle? Diagonal wrinkles are always depth, you guys. Always, always depth. So when you have this garment on and you're looking in the mirror, because I assume it's the back of you, just pick up the shoulder seam here. You know, just try different things to see what works on you. The beautiful thing about draping is I can kind of, you know, pinch around and figure it out because the cloth will react. If it's diagonal, that's telling you that something's depth something's wrong with the depth and a dart is going to be the answer 100 percent of the time okay darting is depth it's angular i'm sorry if i missed this from your example of adding the side dart to reduce the gap at the underarm how much would you change the back to match you wouldn't you'd restore the front once let's say if you pinched up two inches and you were going to pivot out that dart to two inches you're going to add two inches to the bottom of the front to equal the back Okay. 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 Sorry. The outside neck of Leanne's top droops on me. I have a tall, skinny neck. Oh well, then yes, you can dart the pattern. I wouldn't dart. I wouldn't dart the actual garment. I would. You know that's why muslins are so good. I see what you're saying. I would dart the the muslin. Make a muslin. Dart that. And yes, take it from where you're pinching it along here to nothing at the neck edge, you know, where it sews together. I gotcha. Okay, but yes, that'll work. Okay. Okay, so we are going to do a sew along on Saturday. Uh, we're not raising money for anything, you guys. We were thrilled. We donated $3,000 to Feeding America. We got back that um, kind of certificate, a little thank you from them. That $3,000 will make 30,000 meals. That's substantial. So 30,000 meals. Um, you know, COVID-19 is still a real issue. Um, I talked to several people, three people actually in New York today, and all of them have the same kind of, uh, I don't know if it's, it's not panic, but it's, it's bad. It's really bad there. And, and you know, I'm in Texas. We don't, we don't feel it as much. But anyway, I'll, I'll make this announcement via email to anyone who's registered on the fabric buying trip. We're not going to go in a, end of August. The fabric guys just feel for as slow as what it's opening back up. We're going to move it into October. October is a beautiful time to be in New York. Um, I've just got to cross T's and dot I's before I announce the actual date. I'm sorry to move it again. I do not want to take anybody to New York and not being extra cautious and the New York guys feel the same way. So we're just going to be extra cautious and move it back a little bit more. Other than that, like Pinehurst, for instance, is in a few weeks. We're going to be, we're going to Pinehurst. Pinehurst is open. It's you know it's just totally different where you are in the country. So we are excited though. I'm really excited to see those ladies at Pinehurst. And if you need to get out of the house, airplanes are even going. Fly to Pinehurst. <laughs> we'll see you in Pinehurst. All right. So we've got questions. I hope this answers the questions that you have. Um, Saturday at the so long. We'll see you then. Thanks for watching. All right. See you next time. Happy sewing you all. Stay safe. Bye.